Welcome to Life on the Rock, and we have a full audience here tonight. EWTN is hosting the Catholic Radio Conference here in Birmingham, and we have, uh, I think it's about 160 participants this year. And tonight we'll be speaking about Catholic Radio. We're interviewing some of our uh, radio uh, personalities you've heard on the, on the network, like Colin Donovan, John Martinoni, Teresa Tamio, Al Cresta, and others, and some of our own EWTN uh, higher ups and management that uh, in charge of radio. So we'll be speaking about radio, its importance, how to promote it, and what's going on in the radio world today. And it's good to see you, Doug. Yeah, it's you been too, a while. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, we had yeah. plane trouble last time. I did, but which is not uncommon for me coming down here. No, it's not. I'm, plane. I'm amazed. I was not snowstorms. It's like no, rain. And this was hydraulic fluid leaking out of the landing gear. Wow. Uh, so I agreed on that one that we shouldn't fly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stay here until you get that thing fixed. <laughs> So now, someone gave you a nice. Yeah, gift. my good friend Tom Sullivan just gave this to me uh, before the show. He's here in the audience tonight, and uh, Tom and I go way back. And here is fantastic gift. Look at this. These are stones, actual stones from the shrine to Saint Michael the Archangel in Gargano, Italy. Mm. And this is a gift from a priest, friend of, of my friend Tom's, who went over to Gargano and brought this back so we could place these in Camp Gargano here in Lincoln, Nebraska. All right. Yeah, so we have stones from Gargano, Italy, the famous shrine, 1500 year old shrine to St. Michael the Archangel. Will now some of these stones be placed at Camp Gargano in Lincoln, Nebraska? And why did you choose St. Michael as a special, special? Uh, patron. You know, primarily father because you know he's he's our, he's our chief warrior of the mm. angels, you know. He's that angelic leader who cries mm. out who is like under God and says it's time to get out there and start kicking demons around and taking names, you know. I mean, he he's he's an angel. I mean, like like all the angels work for our Lord obviously, but we're talking about Michael here who, you know, you know, you don't mix any words, you don't you don't compromise, you know. And so you look to an angel like Saint Michael and you say, you know, I want that spiritual tenacity, that spiritual, you know, vigor, that warrior attitude ah. that we all need, especially men especially men. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's why we chose St. Michael. And speaking of action, right, we have upcoming elections for our country, uh, midterm elections, we yes. call them, national elections. Yeah, in the words of Sylvester Stallone, absolutely. <laughs> that's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> terrible impersonation, I realize that. Adrian, <laughs> cut me, Mick. But, the Midwest uh, can't do it. No, you can't. No. <laughs> can be from Philly. Yeah. But, uh, no, you're right, they're, they're big. And mm -hmm. just a few weeks away, ladies and gentlemen, we can't, uh, we can't sit on the sidelines. You know, we've got to call on St. Michael, all the saints and angels. We've got to get involved. We have to put people in office who vote life and family first. All right. Amen. Yeah. Now, tonight we have a special phoner with Mike Sweeney. Sweeney. We've had him on the show. It's been a number of years ago, but uh, if I remember right, uh, it was Swing Dog Sweeney was his uh, nickname, but Mike has just made it into the playoffs. He's a Major League Baseball player for the Philadelphia Phillies. So, Mike, are you there? Yes, sir, Father Mark. Um, it is me, and I, I would love to be there in person, but unfortunately, uh, or fortunately for me, <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> for you guys, I can't make it out there to uh, Irondale, but um, I'm here in Philadelphia, and we're getting ready for the uh, – second round of the playoffs. We're one step away from the World Series, so I'm, I'm having very very blessed to be here in Philadelphia and excited to be on the show. Can you talk about what it's like? This is your first time to the playoffs. You've had a long career. What's that like for you? Well, it's, I'll tell you, you know, and, um, you know, for me to be, have a chance to play in the major leagues, it, it is a true blessing, and this is my 16th um, season in the major leagues, uh, 13 of which have, I've spent in, um, in Kansas City, so um, I uh, spent 13 years in Kansas City, one in Oakland and two in Seattle before making it finally here to Philadelphia. And, um, you know, to my good Catholic brothers, I've, I've told them that, in a sense, I've kind of lived out my purgatory in Major League Baseball by, you know, in the, <laughs> the bottom-dwelling teams. And now coming to Philadelphia has finally given me a chance to uh, kind of hit the highest level in, uh, in baseball realm, at least. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a really cool, cool experience. I know, Mike, obviously your faith is very important to you at the center of your life. Can you talk about that in relation to baseball? Well, you know what? A lot of, a lot of people in, in our culture today, uh, you know, think, oh, if, I, if I drove a nicer car or lived in a bigger home or if I could achieve a little bit more stardom or, you know, achieve this, um, it's going to make me happy. It's going to give me joy in life. And as great as it's been playing Major League Baseball for all these years and now getting a chance to play in the postseason, and we're one step away from the World Series. Um, it's great. It's great to, you know, have these happy moments here on earth. But I'll tell you, Father Mark, I mean, you know it better than anyone. My true joy 
um, my true joy, there's a big difference between the happiness and joys of life. Um, my true joy comes from my relationship with Jesus Christ and receiving him in the Eucharist and the sacraments and attending Mass. And I'll tell you, you know, we had, we had Mass on Sunday before we, we won our past division or our past series against the Cincinnati Reds. And getting a chance to go to Mass with my wife and kids was just incredible. And my parents were there. And getting able to receive the Eucharist, um, you know, just hours before winning a championship when we were squirting each other with champagne, you know, it was, it was cool as I journaled that evening. And I thought, man, it was so much, there was so much happiness in the locker room as we squirted champagne upon each other and we hugged each other and embraced each other. But yet there was so much joy at Mass. And there's a huge difference between that. And, um, you know, I, I, it's, I mean, it's, it's easy for me to say it now, um, being at one of the highest places in, you could achieve in baseball, that, um, you know, there's a big difference between happiness and joy. And joy can only be found in, in our Savior, Jesus Christ. I was impressed, too. You were telling me how you have a Bible study with some of your teammates. Uh, can you talk about that? Well, um, I, I know most of our viewers and listeners um, attended Mass uh, daily, if, and especially on Sunday. And in last Sunday's Gospel reading, Gospel of Luke, I believe it's chapter 17, we read about um, Jesus healing the ten lepers. And um, it's really cool the words that uh, came to life were the one leper it said that as they were, Jesus didn't actually put his hand on him and healed him, but he said, he said, go to the priest and, um, you know, report to him and, you, and you're going to be healed. And it said as they were walking, all ten of them were healed, but one of the lepers went back to Jesus and it said he, he worshipped him. He got down on his knees and worshipped our Savior and thanked him for the blessing. And, and the words, I, I love it. We studied this in Bible study after our practice today, um, the very words of our gospel um, and it, it said that Jesus said, your faith has made you well. And it's so neat to, I mean, in our English translation, um, it says, you know, made you well. And in our humanity, we may think, oh, your faith is what cure, has cured you from your leprosy. But the words that Jesus used when he said, um, your faith has made you well, are the same words that the Samaritan asked Jesus, what must, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus said, you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, and you will be saved. Those are the same words um, that Jesus used in, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, when he said, your faith has made you well. So Jesus was telling him, look, um, you've been healed of leprosy, but your faith is what has made you well. That's what saved you. And as we talk about, you know, just, uh, um, being excited about St. Michael and the, and the spiritual warfare that's going on in our lives, it's so excited to know that our faith is, is what makes us well. Um, not baseball, um, not a job not a school, not a relationship, not a, an addiction, but only our faith in Jesus Christ and the, the beauty of the Catholic Church is what's going to make us well, and that's going to give us our home in heaven. Amen. We, we lose sight of that. It's, it's powerful to hear it from you, who's, who's, who's been so successful in baseball, and we wish you the best. We'll be praying for you and your success, and thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you, Father Mark, and I just want to tell you, you guys are doing a great job on, on Life on the Rock and EWTN, and um, there's no greater joy than being in an empty hotel room on the road and um, kind of, in a sense, attending Mass with you guys on the TV. So just know you're doing a great work, and um, I'll continue to raise that flag high of being what it means to be a Catholic Christian man. And um, throughout these playoffs and hopefully the World Series, I'll hopefully set a good example for our listeners of uh, you know, what, it, what it is to be a Catholic man of God. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Okay, thank you for having me, Father Mark. God bless. Okay. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Catholic Radio, so don't go away. <laughs>
All right, welcome back to Life on the Rock. I am Doug Berry, along with Father Mark. We are the Rock House Compadres. We are hiding in the Rock House, which is, again, the same time of day as it is year-round as you look out the window. The sun's always in the same spot. Uh, we have with us three of the higher-up officials. These are the guys that hide behind the big desks and the big windows, and they just make the big decisions that make Catholic Radio function throughout the world. In fact, I hear, like, like Tom Price, I know you're, you're just you're a big shot down here. You... Uh, you, you're an advisor to the Pope, is that correct? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, just another sinner trying not to get in the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we have Dave. Um, Vacherous. Thank you very much. And no window in my office. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Tom Price and Frank Lurk. And gentlemen, uh, Catholic Radio, it's massive. And Father said before we went to the break, we're going to come back and talk about Catholic Radio. Um, Dave, what is Catholic Radio? Just, let's just kind of lay that out for people. Catholic Radio is another great opportunity another vehicle that can be used sh to share the gospel. We should take advantage of every opportunity we have, and this is a wonderful one. We found out through introducing Catholic Radio, EWTN Catholic Radio, some 14 years ago, that it, be, it is a very, very effective tool in the community. Um, we have 50% of our listening audience on average are Catholics, 50% are non-Catholics. Mm. So it's a wonderful, re wonderful way not only to reach our Catholic brothers and sisters, but to reach those who are not Catholic as well and give them the true story, our true teachings, ra rather than have someone else tell our story for us, we have an opportunity to tell it ourselves. Well, and and that, that's a big thing. I mean, that why Catholic radio is set apart from all other radio out there is it is the fullness of the truth. I mean, Absolutely. It, it, provided the programming is good and decent. Um, and it's coming from EWTN. Um, but, but why is it so critical that, that something like Catholic radio um, become just monstrous and huge, as it is already in, in some respects, but, but why is it so important? As you say, 50% aren't, aren't even Catholic who are listening, and yet it's such a critical message to get across. I mean, to go deeply into that, why is that so critical? Actually, I'd like to tell a story that I think sums it up best. I've been involved with EWTN for a number of years, and, and in the early years, Mother Angelica used to do teaching for her employees each Friday. And during one of those teachings, she shared a story with us um, she told the story of being at a conference down on the coast. And during a break, she had gone down to the beach and was walking along the water and uh, just losing herself in thought and prayer, got a little too close to the water and got soaked. And she said as the water began to dissipate, she looked on the top of her left hand and she saw one drop of water gleaming on the top of her left hand. And as she was admiring it, as the sun was hitting and as it was gleaming, she said the Lord spoke to her and said, Angelica, throw that drop of water back into the ocean. Mother, being the obedient person that she is, said she flicked the drop of water back into the ocean. She said the Lord spoke to her a second time and said, Angelica, go find that drop of water. And she said, Lord, you know I want to obey you, but I can't go find that drop of water. She said the Lord spoke to her a third time more sternly this time and said, Angelica, go find that drop of water. And she again, <laughs> pleading with the Lord, said, Lord, I can't find it. It's impossible for me to go in and find that one single drop of water. And she said, he spoke to her again and said, Angelica, you are correct. But as impossible as it would be for you to find that one drop of water in this ocean, it's even more impossible for me to find your sin once confessed in the ocean of my mercy. Why, Catholic Radio? Because everyone deserves to know that that's how much God loves us, that we are adopted sons and daughters of a heavenly Father who loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us and found a church that will guide us safely home. And everyone deserves to have the opportunity to have that information and then make an informed decision. Wow. You know? Well, thanks for coming tonight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this was a great show. I mean, that's kind of like a show ending story yeah. that just kind of lets you go home and think, oh, no, that's awesome. That, yeah. That's so true. That's, I mean, it's so powerful. I'm, I'm just delighted that Dave brought that story up to reinforce Catholic radio as part of Mother's mission right. to be where the people are. That's why we are on the internet so, you know, so prominently. That's why we are now into, you know, phones. You can listen to EWTN on your phone. You can listen on, on satellite radio. And, and as all these people know, that we are on now over 140 
AM and FM radio stations mm -hmm. all across the United States. Well, and I, I, I forgive me for, for not uh, making this clear at the very beginning. Your roles, each of you, um, Dave, your role, what is your, what is your position? What do you I'm working with affiliates, with station development okay. for our affiliates. Okay, and then Tom, you are? Programming. Uh, exactly what's going to air, what programs air, uh, even the little things that air between programs, like a little promos or, or station identifications, little jingles and things like that. Okay, and Frank? I'm the station manager. I kind of oversee and make sure that everybody has the tools and the stuff that they need to, to get the, the programming out there, uh, the highest quality that we can, and um, just to make sure that everything is covered. Well, and this is what I think is so great about what EWTN has been able to provide with you know, each of your three rules and others involved as well, is I was in Tyler, Texas just last week giving a talk at a men's retreat, and a gentleman approached me afterwards and says, you know, we're, we're interested in trying to get you know, some Catholic radio down here. What do you recommend? I said, call Tom Price. Because right. I know you get a hold of someone like Tom or one of you guys, and you have the connections to, to help anybody out there who's interested put all the pieces yeah. in place to get this thing up and running. We've learned over the years, uh, not only what to do, but what not to do. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, mistakes have been made by various apostolates around the United States, and, you know, that, that kind of slows down the process. And then four or five years later, they're still kind of at the starting gate. And people like Dave and, and John Pepe, our radio marketing manager, they know what to do to, to kind of speed the process along. Yeah, John's a happy guy, I mean, with a name like Pepe. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to say something, Dave? Well, I was just going to say, one of the things that we've introduced at the, the radio conferences, EWTN has uh, put forth a whole new set of, um, of, su of support items. We're going to help with fundraising now, raising awareness for the stations, raising, uh, helping with the relationships with the bishop and the pastors with a, a proven method that's been used in probably 50 markets at this point. And uh, EWTN, in its normal course, has, uh, has said that they'll provide all of this support mm -hmm. for all of our affiliates absolutely free of charge. And, and isn't this true, I mean, Frank, um, that a lot of people who come to, to get involved in Catholic Radio aren't coming from a, an experienced background. I mean, they, they're, they're not coming out of some secular radio, for example. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people over the years of Catholic Radio who have said, you know, I, I, was, a, I was a contractor, or I, was a, I was a maintenance man, or I, was, I ran a, a flower store, whatever it was, and they felt like God put it on their heart. I mean, the people who come normally to get this up and running are, are just individuals who feel like God put it on their heart. That is absolutely true, because, in fact, somebody was saying this week alone, if they would have known what they were getting into, they would have ran <laughs> as far away as they could. But God puts it on their heart. And we've seen people today, this week, we've had uh, nurses, physicians, um, people that have nothing to do with broadcasting uh, other than how to, you know, turning on their radio and their television. Right. And God's just put it on their heart. They don't know where to begin right. and so thank goodness we have this conference each year where people can come they can network they can learn from all the hurdles and problems that the others that have gone before them and it just we're seeing a snowballing effect I mean it took a long time for the first 10 affiliates to come on the air and now EW10 has 144 affiliates. Yeah. Yeah, you were saying Tom right before that, that, that things are exploding in the last 10 years. Talk about that Ken, for a minute. They really are and it's just really been since about 2000 where we have really started if you'll excuse the pun critical mass trying to get to that that number where now all of a sudden more and more stations are, are, are coming across and for people who uh, are just strictly watching EWTN television they may not know about EWTN radio which is pretty much its own entity. We carry some things from, from television, obviously this show, mm -hmm. the world over, the daily mass, and live papal events uh, like, like we just had from, from England and Scotland, but there's a lot of live and interactive programs that uh, do not appear on the television side of EWTN that really, uh, really touch people in a very, a very special way. And the stories are endless of the conversions. I mean, the people, I mean, I've heard this just from the different local stations. If I've helped out with a fundraiser or, or, or spoken at dinner of some sort, I hear the constant stories around the country of people who are saying, oh, yeah, you know, truck driver driving through the area just happens to pick up the signal for several miles. Here's something that draws them back to the church. I mean, enormous stories like that. I'll tell you one real, real quick one. This actually happened uh, several weeks ago when we were getting ready for the, the, the papal events from England and Scotland. And I had prepared a, a special program, an interview with Father C. John McCloskey, uh, all about uh, Blessed Cardinal Newman. 
and uh, through an through an error on my part, it didn't air in its first time slot that it was supposed to air. It aired later in the day, and I was just kind of beating myself up. I thought, oh, it was my fault. I didn't talk to the traffic guy. And uh, The next day, I got a phone call from a woman because this other program ran in its place, and she said, I was just about to commit suicide when I heard that program. Wow. And I thought, oh, that's why we didn't run the Cardinal Newman special. <laughs> now I understand. Thank you, Lord. Which is why when I tell my wife when mistakes happen, honey, there's a reason. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me a hard time. God, God used me and my you know, weakness to sure. mess this up for some good reason somewhere. All right, we've got to run to a radio promo, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out about Catholic radio. Don't go away. Come in. Father, may I talk to you? Of course. Sit down, my son. I'm not sure what's going on here, Father, but I see EWTN everywhere I go. I see EWTN on cable. I go to a friend's house, he's got it on satellite. Then I get in my car, I hear it on the radio. I go home, it's on my computer. Online, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, my iPod. I, don't misunderstand me. I love EWTN. It's like it's everywhere. What should I do? What should you do? You should tell everyone. EWTN is everywhere. It's even on my phone. Isn't it great? Yeah. Thanks, Father. I will tell everyone. Oh, I feel so much better. WTN spreading the word is what it's all about. It was Mother Angelica's dream to have Catholic radio coast to coast and from continent to continent. Today, that dream is a reality thanks to Catholic media apostolates like you who help to support and fulfill that dream. From Catholic radio stations and station groups to program partners and guests, all working together to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and the church he founded. The EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network's goal is to work hand in hand with our affiliates and the local church too through opportunities for promotional announcements on EWTN and on local stations. All this combines with the positive grassroots support of the EWTN media missionaries who work in local communities to support EWTN television, EWTN radio, and EWTN.com. They can be a powerful tool for your radio apostolate. The bottom line, we are here to help and support local radio initiatives everywhere. EWTN, radio for serious Catholics like you. Back of Life on the Rock, we got an enormous crowd here. Four or five thousand people, I think, have shown up for this show. <laughs> they had to add on. They pushed the walls out. Yeah. Put more bleachers out here. No, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Doug Berry here, along with Father Mark. Rock House Compadre is on Life on the Rock, the most important show you could be watching at this given moment. And we have with us three of uh, world famous. Just you know, we are. Well, according to the very small world that I know. Oh, okay. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No, world famous Catholic radio personalities here, though. I mean, you've been around a long time. This is Teresa Tommy. Well, not that long. Thanks, well, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, long I time. wasn't speaking in regards to your age. No. <laughs> Colin Donovan and Al Cresta here. And great to have you guys on the show here. Thank you. Okay, Thanks. Catholic Radio. Let's get right into this. Teresa, we'll start with you, ladies, first. What is the importance of Catholic Radio? I asked Dave in the first segment. Let's hear it from your perspective as radio hosts. Why is it so critical? You deal with people on a regular basis, the phone calls, the interaction, you're paying attention to what's going on in the world. You're taking the secular world, tying it in with the fullness of the truth of our Catholic faith so we can be in the world but not of the world. Why is this so important, especially in this day and age when the media is, is, is enormous? It's, well, it's evangelization. I, and radio is so personal. It's such a personal medium. And I do television as well, but uh, radio was always my first love because you connect in a much different and a much more personal way with people. And, and you know, we've had so many stories of, of conversions and reversions. You know, Tom was telling that very powerful story. And, and, you know, I've heard that over and over again. We had a woman who was listening on Immaculate Heart Radio in San Francisco, and she started listening to me because she was an Italian-American, and she got a kick out of my voice and my style. And she started listening, and she said in six months she received more catechesis on EWTN than she received in 12 years of Catholic school. And after 25 years, she went back to confession and came back to the church. Mm. You know, and you've, if you get one of those a year, it's like, okay, this is all, I mean, or any time, really. It's worth it. And I think it's, it's evangelizing and re-evangelizing and re-catechizing people mm. because we've been so, you know, misled by the culture. But it's, it's an incredible opportunity, but it's also a huge responsibility, huge yeah. responsibility. And, and, and radio is such a powerful tool for, for missionary work. I mean, Colin, I mean, the, mm -hmm. you're talking about frequencies that are just out there in, you know, invisible land, and yet they can reach the most desolate places. Uh, what's been your experience with, with where it's reached and how it's impacted? Well, just, just that really because, uh, of course, Mother started out with the shortwave station, and I remember in the early days with the shortwave getting letters from ships at sea, people in the South Pacific or in the Indian Ocean who would pick up the shortwave signal. It meant something to them. They were far away from their families. Uh, maybe they were far away from Christ and the church, and yet... Uh, here was here was God reaching out to them. So you really do experience that. And of course, now with the CRA and all the affiliates for EWTN, this really uh, expands the possibilities, especially, especially here in the United States. But of course, we also have AM, FM stations in Latin America and elsewhere. So uh, it really is a, a privilege, but it's something that you can't take for granted because of the hard work of people like from the Catholic Radio Association and the different affiliates who have, who have made possible what uh, Teresa and uh, Al and I are able to do each week. And, and I find that so amazing too. I mean, when, when, you, when you meet people who are just getting things started, they're just getting a building or they're just getting a, a frequency, they're getting you know, that very nuts and bolts beginning and to watch it and expand. You know, Immaculate Heart Radio, for example, out you know, West Coast, mm -hmm. I mean, they've got like 4,000 stations out there now or some. <laughs> Some amazing number. You know, but I remember years ago, Doug Sherman, you know, when Doug, Doug Pearson had take, brought me and my friend Eric Jenis out there for a little trip and spent a few days out there doing the Passion Meditation to some different churches and just a handful of, uh, of radio stations and now, you know, doubling and tripling in number. Right. I mean, and Al, you've been, you've been doing, you know, radio quite a while now, Catholic yeah. Radio. I mean, your experience of seeing it grow, what's that like to see it grow and see it just, just continue to, to build and and, and, and oh, it's, it's been remarkable. I mean, I remember back in 1997, meetings with uh, Doug uh, uh, Sherman and Tony Holman and myself and Chris Williams and uh, I've forgotten who's uh, our liaison with EWTN at the time, but just four of us talking. I think there were probably uh, three or four stations at the time, and here we are now in 2000 and you know pushing 2011 and we're looking at you know 140 plus uh, affiliates. So it's, the growth has been remarkable, and of course alongside that, the creation of uh, these terrestrial stations, uh, there's, always, there's also been the formation of programs. So there's been a lot of new program formation, uh, Catholic Connection with Teresa Tamio, uh, EWTN's online, Crest in the Afternoon. And so you've got programming that grows along with the mm -hmm. stations that are growing. So you got, you're growing at two different levels. You're growing in terms of number of outlets, but you've also, also got to be growing in terms of the uh, degree of professionalism and the the, the effectiveness of ministry. Right. It's 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 remarkable. Not a day goes by uh, without he us hearing stories. I would say in a given week, uh, we'll catch a dozen different stories of, you know, all kinds of conversions of varying degrees of intensity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a life and death story, like you heard earlier. Uh, other times it's uh, not quite as dramatic. But uh, somebody just 
was driving down the highway and they saw a bumper sticker. You know, the, the bumper sticker led them to uh, turn on Catholic radio. And that's, I think, primarily what we do. When people tune in to Catholic radio, they get remedial catechesis. Mm -hmm. I think if there's yeah. one thing that we do, I mean, we, we do a lot of different things, but the one thing that we're probably most effective at is remedial catechesis. Uh, American Catholics have had a generation of, uh, you know, theological amnesia. And uh, were it not for the ministry of Mother Angelica and EWTN and now with uh, EWTN Radio, a lot of what the church teaches wouldn't be accessible uh, to people. Uh, there's a theology professor at Notre Dame who wrote an article a few years ago now uh, simply called Ignorant Catholics. And he was talking about the undergraduates that he was receiving at Notre Dame, you know, a fairly prestigious uh, Catholic institution. And he said, and he wrote very clearly about this and candidly, he said, you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised. I have undergraduates come in and they have to take a core theology course. They don't know what the Immaculate Conception is. Mm. Uh, he, he said, they don't know how many uh, members there are in the Trinity. <laughs> which, which, which makes me think that there may be a you know high school math problem oh. too that's involved with it. Yeah. <laughs> but the, it is a, it, that's what we do. We do remedial catechesis. We remind people we're the echo chamber mm. for the magisterium, is the way I like to put it. Right. But uh, we also try to uh, tell our story in a way that the New York Times and the Washington Post and ABC won't be able to. They sure. simply can't. They, can't. Sure. they don't have the, uh, the assumptions, they don't have the talent, they don't have the background. And Catholic radio and Catholic television has to be there just to provide that breeding ground for talent and intelligence. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the kind of things that go on with EWT and open lines, those are questions being answered that nobody at the New York Times can answer. Well, and that, that's always, you know, I, I thought has been one of the most powerful aspects of the Catholic faith in general is that, you know, any debate, discussion you want to get into with anybody, we have this depth, this, yeah. this knowledge, these yeah. volumes and volumes from saints and, and, and theological masters, you know, that, that just... So many people don't huge, know about it. Exactly. And, and you know, it's, it's, an it's, it's inexhaustible an in terms of the resources. It isn't, and it isn't missed, every yeah. time when we do yeah. a show and we mention a website and where to find a document, I was talking about a wonderful uh, statement that our Archbishop in the Archdiocese of Detroit put out warning Catholics about this, this pseudo-Catholic conference that's, that's coming up. And everyone wanted the, the article. And then I were, Dr. Pia Dee Slaney was on my show, moral theologian. We were talking about the beautiful off-the-cuff remarks the Holy Father made at the Synod of Bishops from the Middle East. And everybody was emailing me and calling into the studio and saying, where can we get that document? People need to know mm, right. these resources so they can access them because this is great stuff. And even 10 years ago, we didn't have as much access as we did, you know, as we do now. It's phenomenal. And right. it's just such a great thing to see yeah, all these people ex so excited about their faith, and we grew up not knowing about this. Sure. You know? Well, and this is the sort of stuff, too. I mean, everybody knows somebody, directly or indirectly. We're all affected by someone who's got marriage problems, they've got addiction problems. There's something out there that, yeah. that is inundating our society. Right. I mean, we're saturated with these problems that I would think, you know, the, you know, the, the, the need to run to something like Catholic Radio mm -hmm. to find that source of truth Absolutely. and that help. I mean... Well, and you have, as, as Teresa alluded to earlier, you have an immediacy with the person that's listening to you that I don't think you have necessarily with television yeah. because, uh, you know, you're, you're there and maybe they're in their car or in their bedroom or walking along with their iPhone or whatever and listening to you, and it's you and them. And so I think that has an ability to touch people's hearts sometimes more than anything other than, say, the personal counseling they might get in the sacraments or in the rectory or, or wherever in a counseling room. And so I think that, along with the remedial catechesis, is a big part of what we do, whether it's a program dealing with secular issues, as Teresa and, and Al do very often, uh, or something dealing very strictly with the internal life of the church, People want those answers, and they also want reassurance, not just answers, but they want to know that people know what they're talking about, and you can communicate to them the confidence you have in the truth. And I think that's also something that we can do through radio. You know, too, I think what we do, and, and what I'm so proud of is working, you know, uh, for Al at Ave Maria and 3W10, we have a very strict vetting process. And so the guests that are on our show, they have to be approved. So we don't just throw any fly-by-night person mm -hmm. on there. And the other thing, too, I was talking about the responsibility earlier, 
earlier. I'm, I'm sure you get this. I know, Al, that well, we talked about this. I should say, too, Teresa, that's the same with Life on the Rock. Yeah. Which, and it, it was difficult to get you on when she I know. I know. <laughs> the whole process. But right. we were but able, here. Father Mark and I really Thanks went to bat to for you. So. For you. Yeah, Thank okay. you. Just want to let but you no, know. The responsibility, though, of having a guest sure. that's orthodox and Absolutely. is following the teachings. And the other thing that comes with that is that people ask us very crucial questions. I had a woman write me saying, you know, her, her priest is teaching this, this or that. Should I leave my parish? You know, that's not, I, I'm not in the position to answer that question. Right. I said, you have to do that through discernment. You need to talk to your priest and maybe a spiritual director. But what I do have is a list of, of experts, let's say a, a counselor, a Catholic counselor, a marriage counselor, different resources that I know I can refer these folks to. Now, I can answer the questions of the cows come home about the media and all these other things that I deal with in the mm -hmm. culture because that's my area of expertise. But I am not a Catholic counselor. I'm not a marriage counselor. So the responsibility that we have, because people are just hearing about their faith and, and, and realizing that, my gosh, maybe I need to go to confession or do something else. So we take these, this role very, very seriously. Yeah. Well, some talk show host on another you know, on a secular station may just give them a very flippant response that could send that person in the wrong direction, right. you know? I, I, I love the, uh, the personal dimension that you're bringing up on it, Colin. I think it's, it's so right. You know, we evangelize, claim the good news, we edify, we build people up, we encourage, uh, uh, we engage the culture, we educate, and uh, when we get a little giddy, we entertain. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, one of the things that I like too is Catholic Radio helps order people's lives. I mean, it's a way of helping to bring that sense of peace and that sense of order, uh, putting us in that right order between God and us. And that's what everybody's seeking in the mm -hmm. end anyway. Yeah. Teresa, you, you study the secular media and you see trends and everything. Where would you like to see Catholic Radio go? How to develop and style or what in some way? I would just like to, you know, God willing to see it to continue to grow and expand and have, you know, thousands of stations versus just, you know, and we're very thrilled, as Al said, with the, with the explosion of Catholic Radio stations, but it is so needed right now. And, and the Catholic Church is the last bastion against all the evil that's out there. I mean, we're the last thing standing. There are a lot of wonderful Protestant ministries and other ministries out there and, and even groups that are secular that are trying to fight some of the things in the culture. But in terms of the teaching, in terms of of the documentation in terms of the voice. The Catholic Church is it. And so I just say, you know, the sky is the limit. With God, all things are possible. And, you know, what's another 2,000 networks to God? He's God. He can handle everything. So I'd like to see us just explode. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I would say dream big because God is much bigger That's than right. our dreams. Right. That's right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to run to a break. Please do not go away. We have more wonderful and exciting guests on Catholic TV. I was going to say Catholic Connection. <laughs> <laughs> Life on the we back right after this. Don't go away. <laughs> See, ladies and gentlemen, this is my friend John Martinoni. We decided to wear the, almost the exact same shirt. We didn't plan this, though. We did decide to do the hair the same way, though. <laughs> you left the rest of yours at home, though. Well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Life on the Rock, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Barry, along with Father Mark, your Rock House compadres, high up in the mountains, hidden from the enemies of truth, and we have... Uh, some other great guests here. We're back with Dave Vacheres is back with us again on this final segment. We have John Martinoni. You and I have been friends quite a while. Go back. A long time. And uh, you are Deacon Mike Learned. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Speak with him long enough, you'll be a very learned individual. <laughs> you'll learn much. Wow. ba <laughs> Two shows on Saturday. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Father Mark, I know you wanted to throw something at Dave here. Yeah, I've, I've known Dave a while and worked with him a little bit years ago. Uh, how did you first get involved with radio? <laughs> You know, every, a lot of the people that have started Catholic radio station and stations and been involved in one way or another have very dramatic stories about the Lord calling them to that, uh, to that work. I do as well. Actually, I was working in corporate America, and the company that I was working for was going out of business. So I came to visit Mother. I was living in Birmingham. came to visit Mother Angelica to ask her... Uh, for her and the sisters to pray for me that I'd, I'd find a new job. I was, uh, had a family to raise. And Mother Angelica at that point said, Dave, why don't you consider coming to work for EWTN? I have a position available in television and one in radio. 
And obviously when mother makes a personal invitation, the answer was yes. I said, absolutely. And she said, well, which would you prefer? Would you prefer to go on the television side or this brand new radio project that we have going? I said, well, I'm not sure. Let me pray about it. So I went home. I prayed about it for a few days and came back and met with mother. And I said, mother, I'm just not getting any clear indication whether I should go television or radio. Do you have any clear idea? And she said, radio. I said, mother, how did you know so quickly I should go into radio rather than television? She said, honey, you had the perfect face for radio. (laughs) (laughs) Some Some people's call is more dramatic than others. You know, some people at home, they're, they're <laughs> trying to start a radio station. They're afraid of taking on the responsibility. Part of your job is to help them with fundraising. You know, what, what do you tell these people to encourage them? Well, the trail has been blazed. And those who started in Catholic Radio many years ago, I really believe, had a much tougher time than those who feel called to it now through uh, the Catholic Radio Asso- Association, CRA, and EWTN and the many um, things that we are helping the stations with now, it really, because we've seen success for those who started, and I, I'll, I can speak directly to those who have started EWTN Catholic radio stations, those stations that have followed the process that EWTN is providing have had 100% success. So if you take advantage of that support, which EWTN provides free of charge, not only programming, but as you said, support in the area of fundraising and that kind of thing. Uh, I don't want to say guaranteed success. I know it takes faith, but I've been involved in this for so long and I've seen it successful so many times. I want, you know, I, I, I'd say I know I need to have faith, but I've, I've seen it happen so often that I believe it 100%. And, and I would strongly encourage anyone who feels called to start a Catholic radio station, get in touch with us at uh, radio at EWTN.com. We can let you know how to do that, all the steps that are necessary, and the support is absolutely there. You know, I just heard recently in a homily uh, a priest gave um, a great, great point that when Christ worked miracles when he walked this earth, he oftentimes, most of the time, would say to people, you need to do something that seems impossible, such as the man with the withered hand. He told him to stretch out the withered hand. He said, well, it's withered. How am I supposed to be able to do that? But the Lord said, do it. He tells the man to pick up his cot and walk. You know, well, I'm, I'm crippled. How can I do this? You know, he, he's telling them to do things that in, initially seem impossible. It's, it, it's contradictory to where the situation is. And I think if we can get a shot, just to pan across this room again and show these people, look at the numbers of people that are in this room. And this is not all. This is a drop in the bucket compared to people out there involved in Catholic Radio. And I'm willing to bet that almost everybody here has an amazing story of, of reaching out the withered hand, of getting up and walking when it looked impossible. Am I right, ladies and gentlemen out here? You all have it? Yeah. <laughs> and... And I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to bet it's a daily ongoing reaching out of the hand. You know, it's a daily ongoing test of that kind of faith. Uh, And everything you're saying, Dave, I think the examples are right here in this room. And this isn't even everybody involved in Catholic Radio. It's an ongoing uh, proof of God's uh, God's power working through, um, you know, faith. And a couple great examples sitting with us here. (laughs) Yeah, Deacon, tell us uh, your story. Why, why, Why you're involved in Catholic Radio? Well, I started in Catholic Radio because I believe God called me to do this. We, my wife and I, owned a company for 21 years. And it was a small company. It was very profitable. And our customers were very happy. But through strange events, we were forced out of business. And I don't need to go into all the details of that. But it was so odd, I decided to take it to prayer. So I spent months before the Blessed Sacrament praying the simple prayer, Lord You've, you've put me in this position. What do you want me to do? And because the company that I owned was a, an electronics company and I had electronics training, I actually had um, radio electronics training 35 years ago or something. And the idea that I, could, I knew how to run a small business, I thought, well, what, how am I, I going to put that together? And then one day it just dawned on me. And I, I think it was the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Why not Catholic Radio? And so I prayed about that and prayed about that. And, and I, I came to understand that EWTN had programming, which was my biggest question at the time. Where would I get the programming? And EWTN gives the programming. 
And so what I, what I did after I was certain, at least to the point it was time to test the call, I picked up the phone and I called a friend of mine. And this friend is a, a lady by the name of Murr Bookmiller in Toledo. And she is a fund developer. She, she helps raise money for nonprofits. So I said, Murr, I think I know what God wants me to do. And she said, what? And I said, she wants, he wants me to bring Catholic radio to the Diocese of Toledo. And I heard this scream. And I wasn't <laughs> sure if she was being held up. <laughs> I wasn't sure what that meant. And then when everything calmed down, I mean, I just kind of rested for a little bit. And when everything calmed down, she says, I think that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> of course, that was after I already, already spoke to the most important lady in my, in my life here on earth, my beloved wife. And she says, if you think you're called to that, let's do it. So that's how we got started. Mm. And that was four years ago, almost to the day of when we went on the air. Mm. And we went on the air August 15th this year, the wow. Feast of Our Lady. Praise God. It's awesome. And I got to tell you, it, w it was a, it was a, you can't say it's an easy task, all right? Uh, I've heard people say that if you knew what you were going to get into, you would never would have done it. Yeah. But I think God does that on purpose. Mm -hmm. As you were saying, you know, you, you, God asks you to do the impossible. But sometimes he doesn't tell you it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I'm still struck by the fact that he said to 11 guys before he ascended into heaven, go out and baptize the world. Yeah. 11. 11 guys. I mean, they're thinking the world's a big place. <laughs> uh, we don't even, we, we can't even fly yet, you know? We don't yeah. have the internet. How are we going to reach the whole world? But the mission sounded incredible. I mean, John, you've been in this a long time. You know, you fought the good fight. You've been on the radio. You've given talks. I mean, what's your experience with regards to the, the times that we're in? And let's look at it in the last few minutes of the show here, uh, of really the fact that this is a battle. It's a spiritual battle. I can't let a show go by without bringing up the idea that this is battle. We're in a fight. It's for the salvation of souls. Our Lord has shown us how serious it is by dying on the cross. You know, and, and the, the enemy is vicious. The times are serious upon us right now with, with the power of media and such. What's your experience with regards to being in the thick of that through the radio? Well, I, I'm going to say something hopefully won't shock people, but uh, I always tell folks I hate a whole lot of things to do with Catholic radio hmm. because it is a pain in the neck to get it on the air, to keep it on the air. It seems like every time a thunderstorm passes through Birmingham, all the other radio stations stay on the air. <laughs> Ours goes off the air. I was like, what is with that, God? You know? So uh, it is, it's a battle. It's a constant battle. And people say, well, that's Satan doing this or that. And I say, well, I don't, sometimes it probably is Satan doing things, but other times it's probably God saying, do you have enough trust in me? Because I'm showing you that you can't do this. And we can't. And everyone here will tell you that, you know, we can't do this. It's God who's doing it. And these folks here uh, are just vessels of, you know, letting him work through them and for them. But I always tell people Catholic radio in terms of the times, the culture of death that we're in, Catholic radio is at the forefront of the battle against that. Yeah. And that's why Catholic radio is so, so very important because you know, listening to shows like Teresa's show with the pro-life, the open line, uh, Barbara McGuigan specifically with the pro-life issues, which are, you know, life and death, life and death. And Barbara McGuigan there and, and the other programs on, on Catholic radio, on EWTN television. And it is, it's a, it's a war. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a spiritual war. And if you're not equipped, if you're not prayed up, uh, then you shouldn't be getting involved with Catholic Radio. All right, all right. You're right on to that. We have just about a minute and a half left. Uh, just a couple seconds from each of you. Gentlemen, Dave, what would your closing words be to the world watching and listening right now with regards to what we're talking about here? My closing words would be that the growth for Catholic Radio in the last 10 years has been tremendous, but we are not done. Mm. We need many, many, many more Catholic Radio stations throughout the United States in particular, and you're being called to start them. So when you answer the call, we can come and we can help you and we can get a station on in your area. We need to do it now. Yeah, more beaches to storm, more hills to take, more, more oppression to be, be kicked out of people's lives. Deacon. I believe what I'd like to say is EWTN, without EWTN, we wouldn't be on the air right now. It was our inspiration to start it. It was the motivation to say, yes, we can do it. It was God's grace that got us here. And it was through the help of Dave, who helped us when we, when we received our uh, construction permit, help us learn how to raise money. Mm. I mean, that was, 
what we what we thought we were doing before I don't know but <laughs> <laughs> it is it is it is very important to know that if you trust in God he will put people in your path that will make it that will get you by to accomplish the task before you and with Dave's help we got to the point where we raised enough money to build a station and now we're sec building a second station right now I think that's a critical point Deacon is that you, you trust in God he he will provide the people at the time and the place to make it happen. Exactly. His time frame, not exactly. ours. John, what would you say in closing? Well, you just heard me say I hate a whole lot of the things to do with Catholic Radio except the finished product. Mm. It is well worth all the struggles, all the pains, all the heartaches uh, to put a Catholic Radio station on the air because it literally changes the religious landscape wherever Catholic Radio goes on the air. It's a, right. it's a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, medium for teaching and, and preaching the Catholic faith. Yeah, right on, brother. It changes the landscape. Father, I'll let you take us out of here. Okay, next week we have the International Theological Institute on. Some students, administration from that school in Austria. It'll be a great show. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. My Heavenly Father, shine His face upon you and give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you next week. Amen.